Welcome to Frost Astrophotography. In this video, we are going to revisit Barnard 33 or the Horsehead Nebula. Barnard 33 or the Horsehead Nebula is actually a very small dark nebula in the image that I'm going to show you. It is located due south, uh, for me uh, anyway, uh, here at 63 degrees north, and it is within the Orion Molecular Cloud Complex, or just the Orion Complex, as you could say. The dark nebula, as I said, is just a small part of the image, and in the image you can also see NGC 2023, a reflection nebula just uh, southwest of uh, the horsehead, and the bigger NGC 2024 or flame nebula. Both of these are uh, emission nebulas and NGC 2023 is also part reflection nebula. But the horse head is just dark nebula because of the gas and dust that is actually just blocking the lights from the stars behind it. To the left of the horse head nebula and uh, on top of the flame nebula, you can see the brightest star in its class in the night sky. And that is Olnitak, and Olnitak is a blue supergiant. You can see that in my image I have some problems with the halos around this star because it's so bright and uh, too bright for my 7 nanometer filters to handle properly. The uh, Horsed Nebula is located uh, uh, around 1,375 light years from Earth. The image that we are going to look at consists of 180 light frames with a total integration time of 15 hours, and that is actually 60s2. 60HA and 6003 light frames of 5 minutes each. Let's dive into Pix Insight and look at some processing steps of this fascinating nebula and area in general. <music> Looking at some stacked and drizzled master light frames for the three filters HA03 and S2. Now, if you look closely, you can see some artifacts of the rotation between February 2022 and February 2024. 
Since I haven't touched the rotation uh, at all on this camera, it has been fixed and it hasn't come off. Well, I cleaned it one time, but it came back roughly in the same position, I would say. So the frames for this image that we're going to look at was actually collected uh, February 2022, December 2023, January 2024 and February 2024. So it's uh, two years apart from some uh, frames. You can see here in the O3 that we have some artifacts here and that is because the entire frame has rotated a bit to the left a few degrees I would say or more than a few can see the same residues up here as well. And this will have to be cropped out uh, because there's no way in, to salvage this now. Uh, so I've actually been thinking of uh, doing a rather rough cropping or hard cropping of this, of these three light frames. You don't actually see as much of the rotation here because the quality of the data was much better for HA. But you can see it here in the O3. You can also see it a little bit here in the S2. Uh, the total amount of frames that I used here is 60 for each filter, 180 light frames in total, 5 minutes each, and that is 15 hours. So the last image that I uh, made and uh, also revealed on my website here had about half that amount of data. So it will be interesting to see if I will achieve something better than I did then. You can also see the blue super giant Olnitak here, which is very, very bright, the brightest star of its class here, O class, in the night sky. You can see that we have a, an enormous halo around it and we have uh, several smaller halos going all the way into this star. We also have some smaller halos around the other two but not so visible uh, in the S2 frame. We will have to address this, of course. Looking at the O3, we have a lot more halos. You can see that we have layers and layers or several different halos here. The O3 filter that I have, the seven nanometer is not the best quality. You can see that we have halos around other stars as well. We are going to try to address some of these just to reduce the halo effects uh, slightly. Uh, you don't have the same problems here in the HA, although if you look closely, you can see very, very faint halo around the on attack here as well. But all in all, I'm fairly happy with the data here. We only need to get started with the linear processing of the Horsehead Nebula. And that Horsehead is actually looking great here in the middle. It's going to be fun to edit this. And it's going to be an SHO edit with SHO stars. The linear processing steps are mostly the same as I normally do. I start with cropping and rotating the image. So now you can see that I have cropped out all of the stacking artifacts that were present in the image here. It's time to do something about the background. I tried using the dynamic background extraction, but found that it was a bit futile since uh, there's nebulosity everywhere. So I opted to go with the automated background extraction and ended up with this result, decided to move on from there. 
And then it was time to do something about the halos. I'm planning on doing a separate tutorial uh, on halos soon. So keep an eye out for that. It might be released before or after this video. I haven't decided yet, so we will see about that. But there are several ways to handle halos. You can basically make a mask to cover the halo area, apply that mask uh, after applying some convolution to it to make the edges of the mask not so sharp, and then use histogram transformation, for example, just to dial down the midtones of that area, reducing the halo brightness. Now for the HA, we didn't have that much problems. Uh, I've just reduced the area on the left here slightly. You don't see much of a difference between the uh, original one to the right and the manipulated one to the left. But I also applied some extra reduction of mid-tones in the center of all attack. You can see that it is a bit bigger and brighter here and a bit smaller here. Next step is to do a linear fit of all three filters, and this is the master, so it's uh, not been manipulated uh, at all. And as always, uh, we run Blur Exterminator to get a bit sharper stars and some sharpening of nebulosity, and this works very good, as you all know. And this is the result after that. And a, as a last step here, you applied some noise exterminator to remove some of the noise in the background and the nebulosity. And that also works fairly good, I would say. So this is uh, before and after on the right here, just the HA after a dynamic crop and on the left, the HA after all of the non uh, of the linear excuse me after all of the linear steps has been taken. So I normally just show HA just to not bore you, but this time I thought I would show you also the halo processing of the S2 and O3. So this is the H, uh, the S2 uh, light frame. Before manipulating the halo, you can see that it is very bright here, and I really want to do something about that. And on the right here, after a few steps of halo reduction, uh, on the bigger halo, as well as the center of all attack, I would say it's a big improvement. I've also reduced uh, this star up here a little bit and this star over here that it is a small halo around as well. You can still see that there's a slightly darker line at the very edge of the halo here. It was very, very hard to get a mask to uh, fit the line of the halo here. It was uh, very uneven, unsharp, and I tried a lot of times, but I didn't get it completely right. But I would say it's a big improvement uh, in these two. How about the O3, you might say then, okay. The O3 is the big problem child have a lot of halos here, halo here, 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 here as well. But this all attack here is the big problem area. Now, I couldn't get this the way that I wanted to have it, but I removed the halos from these two completely. I have reduced the halos from this one significantly. And I've also removed a lot of the halo effects on all attack here. Still stuck with a, a bit darker line out here, but 
this will also somewhat disappear when we integrate all the three filter light frames, I would say. Slight decrease in all attack. I've tried to remove some of the brighter layers in the halo effect here. And I think I did an okay job under the circumstances that I had. Moving on to the nonlinear phase, we always start with making the light frames starless, of course. And this is exactly what I did here right now as well. Here you can see uh, some of the effects of the halo. You can see that, oh, you can see where the halo has been. You can also see that we have a lot of light pollution in the O3. We have some halo effect down here as well, and also some other light pollution. I think I also took the some of the O3 light frames when the moon was up. And uh, even though not full moon, it was like a 70% moon, so I have a lot of light pollution in the O3. I don't have any big issues whatsoever in the HA data here. That looks very nice, so I didn't have to do anything to uh, that. I ended up not manipulating the background whatsoever in these light frames because of the nebulosity everywhere. And after joining the HAS2 and 3 in a, the standard Hubbard palette SHO, I got this results. And uh, you can see that we have a lot of green and magenta here that we really don't like to have. So the first step in my processing is always to run a CNR. And I usually remove uh, 80% of the green in the image, then invert it and then remove 100% of the green in the inverted image. And that removes all of the magenta here that you see here. Uh, I'm fairly okay with how the halos turned out here. Uh, it's a little bit disappointing around all attack, but inevitable, I would say, with my filters. So I had to live with that. Uh, next step is to do some color adjustments and uh, you can go several ways. I used to do color masks for yellow and cyan and apply those uh, and adjust the red and blue colors in the image, but I have found out that the script from the toolbox here that says selective color correction is uh, very nice. If you don't have that, you can add that to your repository. And uh, that is actually this uh, SkyPixels uh, repository. You can copy the address there and add it to your repository in PixInsight and then update to get it installed. As you can see, I have adjusted the blue slightly. I've added some red nuances to the uh, nebulosity here. And I've just upped the uh, contrasts a bit on the areas here that are affected when you are selecting a red mask in that filter. I haven't actually changed much more. Time to run some sharpening. I usually uh, use multi-scale linear transformation tool and unsharp masked for these, as I always do. Uh, you don't see much uh, zoomed out, but there has been some sharpening. I don't like to sharpen too much because I think that will ruin the image. 
And then TGV denoise as a final step, just to remove some noise in the nebulosity and uh, dark areas of the image here. Finally, some more color adjustments. Uh, I've added some more red, uh, increased the contrast even a little bit more and some saturation for the red different tones as well, just to make the effect a bit more dramatic in these areas here. And then we can compare uh, the uh, SHO after joining the three before any processing in the nonlinear step. And on the left here, after processing in the nonlinear phase. I will minimize that and then we will look at some stars. I tried to, well, I tried to do as, as little as much when it comes to stars, although I would like to have nice stars. I don't like them to take over the entire image, so to speak, as well. So I actually do a little bit of processing. So first of all here, we can see the SHO stars right after joining the three frames together. We have some green, we have some magenta here as well that we don't want to. I'm doing exactly the same as I did for the normal light frames. I ran a CNR 80% uh, and then inverted and removed 100%. Then I got rid of the green and magenta stars. Then I did some color correction using the same script just to dial down on the redness of the two stars here and increase the contrast a little bit on the stars. Now this area is not super packed with stars like other areas could be, but still we have a lot of stars in this image and we have a lot of nebulosity and you don't want that. Uh, you don't want the two to uh, collide or fight for the attention. So I have reduced the stars a good amount, as you can see here, original and reduced. And I just use histogram transformation uh, to reduce mid levels uh, to uh, get this uh, image here. So we are going to combine the uh, image to the left here with the image to the right, the stars and stars. And what did I end up with? I ended up with an SHO image with SHO stars. Uh, I adjusted the colors a bit. I also adjusted the brightness and contrast after joining the two together because that's something I always do. And even though I can see still see Halo here, I can definitely still see Halo here. If I look very, very closely and pixel peep, if I zoom in, I can see some residues of the big Halo here, but I can't really see the Halo uh, like I could before I processed this image. And I'm also going to show you the last image that I did for the Horsehead Nebula. And if you look closely around all the tech for that image, you can see the big halo and it has a little darker orange glow to it. That is mainly from the S2 uh, stacked master light frame. So the Horsehead Nebula here, and GC 2023 here, and GC 2024, the Flame Nebula here, and all the tech, all in this 
fascinated uh, or fascinating image from the Orion Molecular Cloud Complex. A total of 15 hours, 180 light frames. Enjoy this image and I will be back soon with another object to process and show you. Thank you so much for watching this video and as always if you like it please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already doing so. If you want to support the production of these videos there is an option listed in the video description that you can use. Until the next video I wish you had clear skies.